This video is supported by Curiosity Stream. Get access to my streaming video service, Nabula, a Streamy Award nominated service, when you sign up for Curiosity Stream at the link down below. During the Starship event in 2022, Elon Musk rehashed his vision for colonizing Mars along with some updates on the technology that would carry that dream. But while everyone is pumped about the idea of potential outer space colony, why did he choose Mars? Why not some other planet in the solar system? For hundreds of years, the red planet has been a fascination for humans. Perhaps the most curious account of Mars came from an Italian. In 1877, astronomer Giovanni Schiaparelli observed a dense network of linear structures on the planet's surface, which he called canali, which means channels in English. In 1910, Thomas Edison's manufacturing company produced a science fiction movie called A Trip to Mars. Our fascination with the red planet escalated to another level in 1938, with a Hollywood night broadcast when Orson Welles' adaptation of H.G. Wells' War of the Worlds led listeners to immense panic detailing an invasion of Martians to Earth. I wanted to know what to do. As a matter of fact, they were phoning us from all over the place, some of them reporting that they'd seen Martians landing in their back yards, asking for advice. And there were others that claimed to have been attacked personally by Martians. The whole experience was extremely intense. For some, Mars is basically a blank state, a canvas for human imagination. It's near enough to see, yet far enough to be beyond verification. For Elon Musk, Mars is humanity's best chance at survival. There are three reasons why he started SpaceX with the goal to colonize Mars in 2002. The first reason is that Earth will eventually go to extinction. The Earth is about four and a half billion years old, and as of now, the Sun is still slowly expanding and brightening. According to scientists, in about 7.6 billion years from now, the Sun will reach its maximum size as a red planet. It will exhaust the hydrogen fuel in the coal and start burning helium, which in turn expands out around one astronomical unit. This means it will likely engulf Mercury, Venus, and then Earth. In an interview, Musk curiously painted a grim picture of a dead one-planet civilization that never made it to another planet and ultimately died out. While referring to Carl Sagan's pale blue dot speech, Musk concluded that Mars will be our reasonable next step. Look again at that dot. That's here. That's home. That's us. On it, everyone you love, everyone you know, everyone you've ever heard of, every human being who ever was, lived out their lives. Our planet is a lonely speck in the great enveloping cosmic dark. In our obscurity, in all this vastness, there is no hint that help will come from elsewhere to save us from ourselves. The Earth is the only world known so far to harbor life. There is nowhere else, at least in the near future, to which our species could migrate. This is not true. <laughs> This is false. Mars. Because of that, it is his mission, or what he called in a tweet in December 2020, destiny, that he wanted to make humans a multi-planetary species. Interestingly, in a non-fiction book written in 1953 by Dr. Weiner von Braun, it describes the name of leader's position in the Martian government would be Elon. What is even more bizarre is that Elon Musk isn't the only one to think so, making humans a spacefaring civilization. The late Cambridge professor Stephen Hawking also famously said in 2017, that humans would need to expand out within a hundred years if they hope to survive. But this still does not answer the question, why Mars? What about other planets like Venus? Well, Venus is considered to be Earth twin since it is closer to Earth than Mars. It is about 80% mass of Mars and 90% gravity. This makes Venus a very attractive alternative. However, Venus' atmosphere is extreme with a surface temperature of 462 degrees Celsius and a surface pressure of 92 bar. That's similar to going to 100 feet deep into the ocean on Earth. So Mars it is, the obvious destination. Musk believed that early Mars is a lot like Earth, and if we somehow warm up the red planet, Mars will have a chance to become hospitable. Thirdly, it is for the sake of human technological advancement. Technology does not automatically evolve, said Mars in an interview. It only improves if a lot of people work very hard to make it better. They think that technology just automatically improves. It does not automatically improve. It, it only improves if a lot of people work very hard to make it better. 
The SpaceX CEO looks at the future from the standpoint of possibilities. What SpaceX is doing is taking action to affect those possibilities, to either accelerate one thing or slow down another. For Tesla, it is accelerating the advent of sustainable energy. For SpaceX, however, Musk and his team are adding something new to the possibility stream. While the sustainable energy future is inevitable, Musk believes that being a multi-planetary species is not inevitable if we don't take actions. Over the past few years, SpaceX has painted a plan of a self-sustaining city on Mars. Starship is believed to be the crucial part of that mission as each will carry roughly 100 tons of payload capacity into orbit. Other technologies that SpaceX is also currently working on include orbital refueling, super heavy booster, and Raptor Engine 2. Mars is the reasonable next step for humankind, and SpaceX is the pioneer in the race right now. We still have a long way to go, but Mars already seems so much closer to reality as Elon Musk and his teams are taking actions towards that dream. Musk anticipates that SpaceX Starship will land humans on Mars in 10 years' time. It's exhilarating to even imagine a future similar to that of Star Trek. That is to seek out new life and new civilization, to boldly go where no men have gone before, and one day we'll get there. Mars has been humankind's greatest dream for decades. As SpaceX is closing in on the goal to land on Mars, are you curious to find out how scientists and engineers are approaching the mission of our lifetime, landing on Mars? If you want to see more content like this, you should check out my streaming service, Nebula. Nebula is my go-to streaming service built and owned by creators like myself, Tech Arta, Real Engineering, Polymatter, and many others. It's a platform without advertisement, so you just watch stuff you want without any interruptions and it allows us creators to make good content for you. Nebula includes hour-long high-quality documentaries from your favorite creators. Because CuriosityStream likes to support independent creators, Nebula has teamed up with CuriosityStream and you can get Nebula for free when you sign up for CuriosityStream with the link in the description down below. If you haven't heard of CuriosityStream yet, it's a platform that has a huge collection of big-budget non-fiction videos. One of the biggest things that puzzles me all the time is how we are going to make living on Mars a reality. How many factors are there that we have to take into consideration for life on another planet to get a glimpse of how hard our engineers and scientists are working for the Martian dream? Check out Mars Insight, seven minutes of Terra on Curiosity Stream to see the adventure of the first outer space robot explorer Insight. It's a documentary detailing NASA's operation to land InSight on Mars in the attempt to map out the red planet's structure, such as its core and its crust thickness. Perhaps more interestingly, how eight years of planning all comes down to seven minutes of Terra, an agonizing moment for the team as the lander descended and landed on Mars. Go to curiositystream.com slash Curious Elephant and get a full year of access to CuriosityStream for less than $15 today. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.